Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, again with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about recovering from a sternal fracture or injury and the specifics of how to get some rest and sleep and just generally get comfortable during that recovery process. This is a notoriously dis uh, uncomfortable injury. Um, it can be something that you receive from an auto accident, a fall. It's fairly common with a lot of cardiovascular surger surgeries. So the sternal recovery is challenging and oftentimes I find that folks come home without a lot of information on how to recover from it. Um, it's usually a non-surgical recovery. Typically they don't have to do anything to the sternum but let it rest and heal on its own with some close monitoring. It's important to know that sternal precautions do exist and oftentimes are neglected or un completely understood upon going home. So the big two are no pushing away from the body like this of any extensive weight and no pulling of a lot of weight. So that's really important if you have a weak core or back and you struggle with getting up and down having a lot of push and pull is going to affect how your sternum recovers. So that's important with the bed mobility and we'll get into that in just a second. So those are important things to know. First things first, let's talk about how you would want to recover early on in the process. When the injury is acute, so early on and very painful, I'm not gonna recommend you lay flat at all. You really can't lay on your side and you really can't lay on your stomach, obviously, during that recovery process. So you're gonna have to lay with some level of elevation. A lot of people choose to relax and rest in a reclining chair at this point of the recovery because it's the most comfortable position to be in to keep the sternum kind of gently positioned, keep your arms positioned comfortably, not have to worry about a lot of gravity putting pressure on the chest. So a recliner is an excellent option early, early on. Now, if you are really hoping to get into your bed, that's what I'm gonna go over next. The bed positioning isn't abundantly complicated, but again, as I said earlier, you wanna make sure you have decent core and back strength to be able to get yourself up and into bed and back out of bed without having to rely on a lot of pulling or pushing. So if you're somebody that kind of needs somebody to pull on your arms to get you out of bed, or you rely on a bed rail or even a trapeze or something like that, that's not going to be allowed early on in the recovery phase of the sternal fractures. So just to be aware of that, if you are able to get in and out of bed fairly well, then these positioning uh, solutions are a really good option for you. So let's get started here with the equipment that I have uh, set up already. I have this wedge, and I will show this wedge because it's kind of a unique one. This wedge has multi-positioning options because of this extra piece here that folds out. You can get a long, um, about a 30 degree elevation. So you can see, now I've got a long 30 degree elevation. I can fold it back out and I can go up and now I've got a much higher elevation or I can leave it like this and I've got about that traditional 45 degree. I find that 45 degrees is most comfortable for the largest number of people as far as resting and sleeping is concerned. So I'm gonna leave it at that and position that at the head of my bed, okay? This way I don't have to lay completely flat in bed and I find for the vast majority of people, this is the most comfortable position to be in. Okay, so traditionally I wouldn't wanna lay directly on the wedge, they are quite firm. So I would add a pillow to the top of that as well. Um, just so something to rest my head on. This is a bit of a thick pillow. You may want a slightly thinner one so that your chin isn't pressing down if that is uncomfortable on your sternum or chest. But this one works well for me, it's fairly soft. Okay, so now I'm going to pivot around and lay down and show you how I would position the rest of the pillows I have to keep me most comfortable, okay? So we're just gonna come back here to the recline position. And I'm put, if you see my hands down here, I am kind of putting them into the bed, but in the chances that you're recovering, you really don't wanna push hard into the bed when you're doing this movement. You're gonna kind of scooch with your bum and just, just move slowly, try to avoid jarring movements, and like I said, try to avoid pushing too excessively through the arms. Okay, so now I'm in that kind of elevated but reclined position. I've got my legs out straight, I can cross them, I can do whatever I want with my legs at this point as long as there's no injuries there. Now, I would recommend having a pillow under each arm. So I've got two pillows here. And the reason I suggest this is because having your arms elevated here is to avoid this movement. Having the arms fall out to the side is really uncomfortable, puts a lot of pressure and stretch across the chest muscles, which are often extremely sore following any kind of 
um, chest injury. So if your arms flop out to the side while you sleep perhaps, or you have the tendency to do this, which is very uncomfortable on most chest recoveries, especially early on with those sternal recoveries, this is gonna hurt. So having your arms in a nice comfortably rested position here on your abdomen, kind of elbows rested here, is going to be, I think, most comfortable for the vast majority of people. Now, this is another very important piece having a small huggable pillow available for you during that early recovery process. This is obviously my daughter's. It's got cute hedgehogs on it. But this is a perfect example because it's nice and thin, it's small, and what you use these for is, it is to hug against your chest in the situation that maybe you are going to be moving around a bit. So if you're trying to get comfortable and any movement hurts, having a pillow across your chest here and just applying some gentle counter pressure to your chest will make a big difference if you've got to cough, if you need to sneeze, if you are even just talking, or even sometimes just deep breathing can be exceptionally just uncomfortable. So during your breathing exercises, for example, having a chest pillow to kind of hug and put some counter pressure can make a huge difference. Some hospitals even provide them for folks when they discharge, especially after cardiac surgeries, they'll give you a pillow to take home with you, but during a lot of traumas, they don't. So having a small pillow, to squeeze against your chest can make a big difference. You don't wanna put a ton of pressure, but this is going to give that counter pressure to really allow you to be slightly more comfortable, especially early on, especially for sneezing and coughing. Those two things will send you through the roof early on in your recovery process. So this is my final position that I'm resting myself in, and I find that most people can get pretty comfortable like this and at least rest for a few hours at a time. So there you have it. The best way to get comfortable while you're recovering from a sternal fracture or injury. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.